All right. So we have our cutout of our creature. In oil painting, this would be like our underpainting. It gives us the different value ranges. Um, it gives us the overall shape on top of the background that we've chosen. I have my inspiration here shrunken down into the corner. That can be helpful. So I see how light's hitting it, where the shadows should be, how detailed I want to get. But how do you build on top of your underpainting if you're doing an oil painting or an acrylic painting? You start playing with edges. You start softening and blending. And so that's what I need to do with more paint strokes. But instead of just using my brush tool and painting with white, you know, even low opacity white, I'm going to paint with other people's pixels. So the way I do that is I bring in my reference, which I have here. See, this is the latest one I downloaded. So I drag and drop that in as a smart layer, like we're very used to, right? I can stretch it a little bit, but I want to be careful not to change its lighting, right? Because if I flip this, upside down, even though that might be the shape I want, that lighting is not going to make any sense, right? Clouds are always lit from behind or from above, not from below, even storm clouds. So now we just do our old, we practice our compositing skills, right? So how do we layer up brush strokes on top of our underpainting? We're going to lasso around them. I just prefer the lasso because it gives nice, clean edges that then I, I take out. I duplicate. And we're dealing with large, large references. So once I've duplicated it, my computer is not quite warm, I'm going to, going to delete the smart layer underneath. Because I don't need to have much reverence for these. Then I'm going to go to my eraser tool immediately. And I'm going to set my eraser tool to be 0% hardness. Pretty large in its size. And I want a self soft round pressure size brush. Fully 100% opaque. Maybe even about 500 pixels. And I'm going to immediately take off that hard edge. In fact, that blue is not very helpful. I might take off all of it, all of the blue, just with my eraser. But what it leaves me with are the internal edges of this cloud and the internal shadows. So this is maybe the first thing I can make, make use of. This is now kind of a brush stroke that I can place on my underpainting. And I see that there is a pretty harsh shadow there under my creature. So I'm going to take this, use my compositing skills, transform it, place it using Command T, but let it overlap. Let it soften out. Right? And that's how you can use it as a brush stroke. And then I could take my, once I've gotten all the hard edges away, I can go down in my opacity of my eraser. And I can start transitioning it a little bit. Though I like that shadow because that helps maybe make up the, uh, the back leg. I'm going to take my opacity down to only about 30 on my eraser. I'm just going to knock things back a little bit. especially where it overlaps my outline. But you see, I'm using this cloud now to soften some of these textures. Because we're not trying to get something that looks exactly like our creature, just something that's suggestive of it. That gives me nice layers. All right, the other things I might need to do, it depends on the cloud, but you might need to go to color adjustment and color balance, or image adjustment, color balance on your brush strokes and push some of the color around. I'm going to put a little bit more red into the, the mid-tones, a little bit less blue, right? Maybe push it a tiny bit more magenta. If 
You just don't want any of your clouds to be a different color temperature than the others. And of course, you can use image adjustment and levels and just use the midtone slider to darken them, brighten them, or limit them. Like I'm going to limit the highlights on that cloud a little bit because that picture was a little brighter than what I wanted. All right, next one. Let's use some of this. So I'm going to lasso around a big bunch of it. Some of its clouds, some of its sky, some of its tree. Duplicate it. Whoops, wrong layer. <laughs> Duplicate it. Then go ahead and delete the smart layer so you're not wasting the memory. It'll help your, your painting go a lot faster, especially when we get to clone stamping. And then we erase with that 100% 100 opacity, hard edge brush. The reason you don't want to use magic wand too much is you want soft edges. Come on, computer, keep up with me. So if you use magic wand and you click with contiguous, you know, all the blue, and then you hit delete, you're going to get little sharp edged fragments in there, which become a, a pain later. So it's easier, in my experience, just to go in with your brush and be pretty aggressive. We don't have to be careful with this reference anymore because we are going to shape it, manipulate it, use it in our own way. I'm doing a lot of the, the navigation shortcuts, command minus to zoom out, command plus to zoom in, command zero to fit it all on the screen. I'm using spacebar when I'm zoomed in to move around my image. And I do as much as I can with large brushes at 100% opacity, uh, zoomed out quite a bit. Because we work from the general basic shapes to more and more detailed. Okay, now where can this be useful? Well, this is great for maybe his back here. So it's just kind of squinting and seeing. And for that, I'm going to warp it and kind of round this out. And then tug it down. And it'll be like one shell on top of the other. And then I'll use a lower opacity eraser to blend it in. Again, around 30%, nice and large. And I don't need that dark shadow so much. But I'm trying to use these clouds to soften the hard edges of my underpainting. And as long as you're using a soft eraser, you're just going to be adding layers and layers of texture and believability as you go, kind of the mist the water vapor around the cloud. All right. This one I'm just going to adjust with hue saturation and actually take the saturation just down a little bit overall. There's a little bit too much kind of blue in there. And instead of shifting the blues towards yellow, I just need to knock them back. Also, remember at any time you can take the whole opacity of the layer and take that down a little bit. But to customize it more, it's better to do it hands-on, in my experience. So I'm going to leave these little trails of, of wisps, because the thing that's not very common in clouds is to have columns coming down. So these legs are going to become kind of disconnected little wisps, but I need to set up for that. That comes from looking at a lot of clouds. All right, I'm going to save it. 
And remember, this is now a, a PSD I'm saving, and it's assignment four. You can always put your name in the name, in the file name, because we want to be able to use all these layers in our working file. We want to use at least five references. I've used three so far, right? The big cutout and then two clouds on top, and I painted my own sky behind. And there's no chance anyone would recognize these clouds. <laughs> now let's see, I need a good tail. I need a good head. Oops. This could be a good tail. You see that top ridge? Very nice. So what I'm going to do, big lasso around it, duplicate it, Command-J, delete the smart layer underneath. That's what's taking up so much memory. Turn off the layers on top or move this to the very top. And now, because I want to keep that outside edge, I'm going to show you how, how you can do that. I'm going to use my magic wand with its default tolerance with contiguous turned on. Click on the blue, hold down shift, and get these other blues around it. Okay. But if I just hit delete, I'm going to get a lot of sh super sharp edges and a lot of little fragmented pieces. See those? Which are just not fun. So now we are going to refine the selection. And Photoshop has changed this a little bit with its 2018 edition. Instead of refine edge here, it says select and masks. So go ahead and click on that. And I've shown this to a few of you, but what we want, first of all, we want to understand how to use this because this is how you can soften a selection area. So it's not always sharp edged. We can feather it. We can smooth it out. We can expand it. It does take a little bit of time and we want it to always remember our settings. So if once you've used it for the first time, go ahead and click on remember settings. Then we want it to preview. So we want a high quality preview up there. I want smart radius so it detects the edges. And I want it to detect the edges within you know, 20 or so pixels. The only problem with this, and notice I saved right before, is it takes a lot of processing. But it's very helpful. So I don't have to zoom in and do a whole lot of erasing. So I'll do within 14 pixels. Then I'm going to feather it by a few pixels. And I'm going to shift the edge by about 16%. And it's not, the preview is not keeping up with me, but if I say, okay, let's see what this does. So what it does is it shifted the edge. It moved it down a little bit. And you see how it kind of smoothed it out? But the more important thing is it's going to feather it, which means it's going to gradate out. When I hit delete, it's going to be a gradual uh, deletion. You see how there are some pixels remaining there? And if I hit delete again, it will be more gradual still. And if I want to do it a third time, more gradual still. So it will keep biting away. So instead of using teeth to cut it out, it's just using lips and gums. Right? <laughs> you decide how strong it is. And if I leave it to remember those settings, now whenever I use high resolution reference and I want to soften my selection, it will remember it. And then I can hit Command D to deselect. And now I can use this as the top edge of my tail without having to delete it all away to something super soft. But I still need to get rid of these little fragments. So I'll lasso those and delete them. And now I'll move that where I want the tail to be. Maybe I'll flip it using Command T, flip it horizontally, angle it a little bit. Scale it a little bit. Free transform is a magnificent tool. And warp it. I could take its opacity down a little and warp it from there. I think something like that's going to work. And now I want to erase away. 
Now with these blues,